Hello friends, my name is Sarah. I'm the person behind Denim and Rain. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm very, very excited for this video. This is my budget-friendly yarn video. I have done one like this in the past. However, it didn't have as many yarns and I've worked with more since then, so I've decided to expand on that a bit. A few things before we get into it. I, of course, will have links down in my description box to all the different places you can find me, my Instagram, my Ko-Fi, in case you wanna say thank you and buy me a cup of tea. I also will have a link to my website, which will have a blog post, which will contain the information from this video. So in case you're not as much a video person or you want to reference things in text, you can go check that out there. I also have some disclaimers before we get into all the yarny goodness. First thing is that I live in the United States, in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> uh, it is the year 2020. Three. So I will be basing things in US dollars and of course the price may fluctuate on year to year because you may be in 2025 and watching this well prices might be more expensive or by some miracle they may have lowered. <laughs> All the yarns I will be sharing with you are ones that I have used personally. Now if I have photos or videos of them that I have taken I will put them on the screen if they're are no photos or videos that means I don't have any of them but I will try my best to dig through all of my stuff to find photos of things I, I have created. I will be sharing each yarn and the fiber content, the yardage, the weight, the grams, the all the different things I can think of for that yarn. Now this is not an exhaustive list. This will not contain every little detail about the yarn. I will list different places you can buy it. Again, not exhaustive. You can probably find it in more places than what I list. It is just a list to kind of get you going. Also note that prices will vary, again, not just on like when you're watching and when you buy, but also from site to site. Uh, one website may have a certain yarn listed for $3.99, another may have it listed for $8.99. It varies greatly. If you have patience, I would check all the different ones out and check out a bunch of different sites to see where you can find the best deal. And a lot of times places have things on sale. Each website or location you visit will also have varying colors. And of course, as time goes on, colors of certain yarns will also vary. They will bring in certain seasonal colors or they will just change out old ones that don't sell very well or they'll add in a whole bunch of new ones so things are always going to be evolving and changing with yarn not always but usually one thing to note is that the price of each yarn like the term budget friendly is going to be relative to the type of fiber a budget friendly alpaca yarn is still going to be more expensive than a budget friendly cotton yarn they're going to vary greatly just because of the type of fiber content. You're not going to find a $1.99 ball of alpaca like you would find a $1.99 ball of cotton. It's just not going to happen because this is a less accessible type of fiber. It takes more work and stuff than a cotton yarn would. Be aware as well that of course the term budget friendly is very relative what may be budget friendly to one person is not to another. You may think that a $20 ball of yarn is budget friendly where another person might think that, you know, a $5 ball of yarn is way outside of their price range. So of course it's going to be relative on your income, your budget for fiber. My goal though for this list is to keep it under $12 per 100 grams. Now there are a couple of yarns that I am sharing that just us go over that a little bit but I will note that when those fibers come up. I do know that $12 still might be a little outside of some people's price range but there might be something else on this list that makes more sense for you or is something that will fit your budget a little bit better. Now this list will have a lot of different fibers. I mean maybe not a ton but it will have a, a variety of different fibers from acrylic cotton, wool, and then a little bit of alpaca. I will be breaking these up into categories 
one for each and then there will also be a blends category where it has a larger mix of fibers so rather than it being like say a 75% wool 20% nylon that would go into a wool category however if it's like 60% alpaca and you know 40% cotton that will go into the blends category because as a larger range of both so that way it kind of doesn't really fit into one or the other it's a blended yarn this list of course does not have all the different yarns that like are out there that are within those categories these are just the ones that I've, I have personally worked with and of course that fit in that budget range so some yarns are just not quite as readily available here in the United States especially when we are talking about animal fibers. Those are going to be a lot more accessible and budget friendly outside of the United States just because those places work with these animal fibers a lot more. One, because it's usually colder and they just have a larger population of people that knit and more of the mills and more of the sheep. So places like that are going to be a lot more budget friendly, but I am going to try my best to share places within the United States that sell them. And then some of them I may be sharing just companies that are in the like outside of the US, but there may be other small shops, local yarn stores, Etsy shops, etc. that sell them. You just have to do a little bit of the work and do your like Googling or put some, put the word out there on Instagram or wherever and be like, hey, I'm looking for this yarn. Does anybody know someone local that sells it? And a lot of times you can find that or people who are, you know, de-stashing. It's another great way of finding budget-friendly yarns. The biggest thing is to just knit with the fiber that you really enjoy and that fits into your budget. You really don't need to spend $20, $60, $100 on knitting an accessory or $80, $90 to $300 to knit a garment. And never feel ashamed for knitting with a budget-friendly yarn. It may not be as flashy and cool as some of the yarns that are out there, but you know, if you're making something and it brings you joy, then go ahead and knit with it. So if creating brings you joy, never fear, there is a yarn out there for you. You just have to, you know, dig a little sometimes. But even if it's a budget-friendly yarn, you can knit some amazing things out of it. Just because it is cheaper doesn't mean it has to look cheap. Then lastly, if there are things on this list that I have not included and there are budget-friendly yarns that you love to work with it, please put it down in the comments. Share it with the rest of us. We would love to know what your favorite budget-friendly yarns are to work with. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, let's dive into the acrylic category first. Let's go ahead and start with the yarn that I'm actually wearing. This is Hobie's Amigo. This is a yarn you can only find on Hobie's site. It is, it is their brand of yarn. It is 100% acrylic. It comes in a DK weight. It has 191 yards. It comes in around 61 different colors and has a price point of about $4.40. I have used this for a great many different things. I've used this for the sweater I am currently wearing. This is a sweater pattern of mine, the Molly Tweet pattern, which is currently not available because I'm going to be doing some edits to it. But I have also made kids sweaters with it and I want to say some other things, but I'm totally drawing a blank. I'm pretty sure I've knit a hat out of this as well. Overall, I would give this yarn around a 7 out of 10. It does feel a little bit plasticky like most acrylic yarns do. It kind of feels a little bit squeaky, but it is really soft. I know some people find acrylic to be itchy, but I find this one to be particularly soft. The only thing that could be a down to it is that it has this like fuzz that comes off of it. You can kind of see it standing up there. It, it. Uh, yeah, it doesn't pill, but it fuzzes and fluffs, which I mean, I guess you could pretend it's like a mohair. It's a fancy acrylic. Uh, so yeah, that's the only thing that like wear wise, and I've worn this so many times and it's been thrown in the washer and the dryer. So it's held up really well. You can also find Hobie's Amigo in other weights. I'm pretty sure they also have a worsted or an Aran weight in this as well. The next yarn is Caron Simply Soft. This yarn is a worsted weight yarn. You can find it in 
tons of different places. You can find it in Joann's or Michael's. I'm pretty sure like Lovecraft's has it. There's you name it, it probably has Caron Simply Soft. This comes in 170 gram balls with 315 yards per that 170 grams. It comes in around 51 colors, which is a pretty good size range. Is around $5.50. I really like the color range of this one. It's not enormous, but it has a good variety of bright colors and neutral colors. So, you know, something for anything you could possibly want to make. Now, I would give this around an eight out of 10. I have knit a great many things out of this. I have knit garments. I have another version of this sweater in it. I have blankets, hats, kids' sweaters, stuffed animals, you name it, I've probably made it out of Caron Simply's off. It, like the Hobie Amigo, has that like slight squeaky, you know, acrylic plasticky feel to it, but I feel like that one probably a little bit less so than this one. And it has a shiny effect to it, which some people like, some people don't. So if you want something that's a little bit more matte, this is a good option. But if you want something that has a like, almost like a fancier shine to it, I really like the Caron Simply Soft. The next one is Paintbox Simply DK, which is 100% acrylic. You can find this one on Love Crafts or Love Knitting or Love Crochet. It's all the same company. They just have different, you know, names. I don't know. I don't understand. The weight is of course in the name. It is a DK weight yarn. It comes in a hundred gram balls and there is 302 yards per hundred grams. It comes in around 63 colors is $3 and 99 cents. The colors again for this one are a really great range. You've got some really pretty brights like this lime green that I showed you. Now this one I would give probably an eight out of 10. I like, this one is probably very similar to Hobie's Amigo. It's the same weight. I feel like it has that same texture, but the price is better. So that's why I've rated it at the eight out of 10. I have made hats and sweaters out of this yarn. I have made my sister a sweater a few years ago, and then I have made uh, hats for babies and I have made sweaters for my children as well so really enjoy this yarn lots of good color options and lots of opportunities to make all sorts of good things this next yarn I'm sure you know all about it is the red heart super saver it is a hundred percent acrylic it is a worsted or Aran weight yarn it comes in 198 grams and has 364 yards this has a great color range of 82 different colors. This of course may vary depending on where you are purchasing from. The different places you can buy this are probably again like anywhere, Joanne, Michaels, any local box store you visit probably has this yarn. Again, depending on where you go will determine like the different colors and the price of course. Now this yarn doesn't rate quite as high in my book. I'm gonna give this a seven out of 10, maybe even a five, it's like kind of in between there. And this one is not the best of quality. I feel like the Hobie Amigo or the Paint Box or the Caron Simply Soft are gonna be better acrylic options for you. They're softer than this one. This one does soften up with washing. Now I have made blankets and just like random garment, like hats and things for the kids. I've made like bear bonnets and things out of this yarn, but it's never really my first choice. Like I currently am crocheting a blanket out of some red heart yarn that I was gifted from somebody and I didn't want it to go to waste. So I'm crocheting a blanket and it is perfectly lovely. Uh, but again, still just, it's not my favorite. But overall, it is a very versatile yarn. I'm not sure I would make a garment out of this one just because it isn't the softest and it is a little bit more stiff than other yarns. So I would probably stick to this one for more like home things, accessories, things like that. But of course, if you wanna make a sweater of it, you go for it. 
I'm sure you can make something beautiful out of it. The last yarn in our acrylic category is my favorite. I'm sure if you've been around my channel, you've heard me talk about this yarn. It is Lion Brand Wool Ease. This yarn is 80% acrylic and 20% wool. You can find it all the different places, Michael's, Joann's, Lion Brand's website, and a bunch of other places online, Amazon, etc. This yarn comes in 85 gram balls has 197 yards. I think that does vary depending on certain colors. I think some of the more heathered ones comes with less yardage. I'm not 100% sure, don't quote me on that. It is around $5.50 a ball. This of course is going to vary quite a bit depending on where you purchase from. I have gotten it from Lion Brand's website for $3.99 and then I've also purchased from Michael's where it's like been like $7. So just look around before you buy. This yarn comes in around 31 different colors. Again, depending on where you buy, we'll have different colors. In store, I feel like there's never quite as many options. The colors I do have, I really like. Not all of them are my favorites. I feel like it's a very muted palette. There's not a whole lot of really bright or punchy colors and maybe not the best variety of like neutrals. I don't know, it's not my favorite color range. So. I give this yarn a 9 out of 10. The only reason it's not a 10 out of 10 is because of the limited color palette. I feel like I can make a lot more things out of this yarn if there was a better color range. But that's okay, I've still made literally everything under the sun using this yarn. I have made sweaters, I have made blankets, uh, hats, scarves, mittens, socks. Oh, I've made more things than that. There are other things. I've made everything out of this yarn. I love Lion Brand Woolies. Not sponsored, but what am I, Lion Brand? Yeah, it's a really great yarn. It is super versatile. I feel like it softens up a bit after you wash it. It is machine washable, which is fabulous, but I feel like it just that wool that's in there just takes the edge off of that acrylic plasticiness. It doesn't take it all away, don't get me wrong, but I feel like that wool content just makes it that much better. So that's the reason I really like this yarn, and it's always. I feel like right in that budget where I can knit something large in it and not spend a fortune, which I absolutely love. Let's next get into cotton yarns. The first one I have for you is again, probably one of those yarns you've seen all over the place. It is either Sugars and Cream or Peaches and Cream. It goes by a great many names. I think they're different companies, but I feel like literally it's the exact same cotton. The one I'm showing you today is Lily's Sugar and Cream. So this yarn you can buy, again, literally anywhere. I think even like my local grocery store has this yarn at the grocery store. But you can find it online, Michaels, Joann's, Etsy, Amazon, etc. This is a worsted weight yarn. It comes 100 gram balls. It has around 120 yards per ball. This, of course, will deter be dependent on the color because I think it does change for different colors. You can usually find this in the price range of about $3.50. It has about 55 different colors available. Again, this will vary depending on where you purchase from. I would give this yarn probably a six out of 10. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's an okay yarn. I only ever use this yarn for home and kitchen things. I have made towels and dishcloths and like little face scrubbies and things like that out of this yarn. I once made a baby blanket out of this. It wasn't my favorite. I feel like it gets kind of crunchy. Like some cottons, when you wash them, they get softer. I feel like this one, it just gets a little bit like shrinks up and stiff. Uh, it's not like rough at all, but it's not the softest thing in the world. A lot of the colors you can find in this yarn though are very nice. So if you have certain colors in your kitchen and you want a dish rag to match, chances are you'll probably find something that will fit in with your kitchen. And if not, all else fails, knitted in black or white. So yes, the uh, kitchen cotton, I will give a six out of 10. Not my favorite, but a really good workhorse yarn. The next yarn is Paintbox Cotton DK. This is of course a DK white yarn. This is again, Lovecraft's Knit Crafts Crochet 
crafts, love crochet, and the, the, that website. This is their yarn. So it is 100% cotton. It is a beautiful yarn. It comes in 50 gram balls, which has around 137 yards. And they have a color range of 63 different colors. I love their color range. They have a lot of really great options and bright colors and neutrals anything you want you can probably find something to kind of fit in that range this is priced around three dollars and 25 cents per ball which i think is a really great price you can get a great many things and uh, not end up spending a whole bunch of money now i give this yarn about an eight out of ten i have used this yarn for baby knits as well as blankets but i do have a garment in the works or will be in the works at some point, uh, planned for this yarn. I think it's really great. It softens up with washing. And again, it's just super versatile. You can knit all sorts of different things. You can knit garments or blankets or cute little baby hats. You name it, you can do it. You can even knit those kitchen things and like it'll be a little bit higher quality than you know the dishy type yarns. It'll be just like still kitchen useful, but maybe a little bit nicer. The next one I have to share with you is Drops Saffron. This one is 100% cotton, comes in 50 gram balls, and has 175 yards per ball. You can find this one on Wool Warehouse's website, as well as Etsy and Amazon. This yarn has a great price point of $1.75 per ball. Of course, that will range depending on where you buy. I believe I got my price from the Wool Warehouse website, which has the best price out of all of them. They have a color range of around 40 different colors, and it has a mix of your neutrals, your primary colors, and then a few you know, a few punchy colors, which are really nice. I've got a bright red, a lime green, a great variety for any different type of project. I would give this yarn an eight out of 10. I have made a sweater out of this yarn and have purchased more yarn to make more garments out of. Though I wouldn't limit it to garments. Again, same as the Paint Box DK, which I feel like it's very similar to. It would be really great in, you know, blankets or home goods, anything like that. I did forget to mention, this is like a sport, heavy fingering sport weight. All right, let's move on to the category of wool. To start off, we are going to talk about Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. You, of course, can find this on Knit Picks website. You may be able to find it in other places, but I think Nitpicks is a place being as it is their brand. This is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. It comes in worsted weight. They do also have a sport weight, but I believe the color palette is a little bit more limited on the sport, so we're gonna be focusing in on the worsted weight category today. These come in 50 gram balls, has 110 yards per ball, and has an amazing 101 color range. 101 colors guys, it is phenomenal. They have so many good colors. Like I, there are so many different ones I want to make things out of. So this price range is about $3.79 per ball. Now this one, I, I have not worked a ton with, but I wanna work more with. Again, that color range is just freaking amazing and I want to knit all the different things with all the different colors that they have. But I have currently knit a pair of fingerless mittens out of, and then I also have a sweater quantities that I do plan on knitting a cardigan out of. It is probably not the softest thing in the world. If you're super sensitive, think of this as a very, it's a wooly wool, but not like the most itchy wooly wool you've ever seen. After you wash it, it does soften up. Now, make sure you hand wash this because of course it is 100% wool not a super wash. So based off of my small amount of working with this, I would give it an eight out of 10. I, as I work with it, that my that rating might change a little bit, but my fingerless mittens that I have made out of them, I really enjoy. They aren't too prickly. They just, they feel cozy and warm. And I really like that. And again, that color palette, so good. But just because I haven't worked with it a ton doesn't mean you can't. There are an immense amount of things you can make out of this. You can make accessories like I have. You can make mittens, hats, scarves. 
you can make different garments. Like I said, I plan on making a cardigan out of it, but I'm imagining like a really beautiful color work pullover would be amazing. Next in the category of wool, we have Cascade 220 Superwash, which is 100% superwash wool. It is a DK weight yarn. It comes 100 gram balls. You can find this in quite a variety of different places. This is a yarn you can usually find at your local yarn store as well online. You can find it at webs.com. You can find it on Lovecrafts, etc. You name it, you can probably find this one. It is a very easily accessible type wool. So for this DK weight yarn, it comes in 100 gram balls. You can it has about 220 yards and has an amazing color range of about 134 different colors. For this 100 gram ball, it is about $11.75. Now, I have worked with this yarn before. I have knit socks, fingerless mittens, hats out of this. So I'd give it probably an eight out of 10. Uh, it's not my absolute favorite uh, for a budget-friendly yarn. It's, it's a little bit higher up there for a budget-friendly yarn. So when I've used this a lot for gift knitting, so actually I don't even know if I have any photos of things I've made out of this because I've used it for gift knitting. Because it's a super wash, I don't have to worry about people throwing it into the washer, but it's like a nicer quality than an acrylic. So it'll hopefully hold up to any wear and tear that people um, put on it. But again, I've only ever knit accessories out of this just because it is a little bit up there. But I know a lot of people have knit garments out of this and absolutely love them. So if you're wanting something that's a little bit like nicer, but it's not hand dyed or like a luxury yarn, I feel like this is a really great option for you because it's like gonna be less than half than of like what hand dyed yarn would cost, but you're still getting that 100% super wash wool that's like really nice. Okay, the next one I wanna talk about is Patton's Croy. Now this one is a 75-25 wool nylon blend. It is a heavy fingering weight yarn. It says that it's fingering, but I've knit with it before and I feel like it's bordering on that sport weight rather than a fingering weight. It's So we'll call it a heavy fingering. Still giving them the fact that it's fingering, but you know, it's not really. These come in 50 gram balls and have 166 yards per ball. You can find this yarn on a variety of different websites and in stores. I have purchased from Michaels and Joanne before, but you can find it on Amazon and like webs and Lovecrafts. So basically, you can find it anywhere. Now this yarn uh, is a little bit pricier. So it is $6.99 per 50 gram ball. So that puts us over that $12 that I was talking about at the beginning of the video. It only has around 10 different colors to choose from, not a bunch. So when you go to the stores, a lot of times they'll only have a few different color options and any place at one time, I can only find around 10 different colors and each website only seemed to have like four or five of those colors. I personally would rate this a little bit lower than some of the other yarns. I would give it a five out of 10, which is my worst rated, I think, on this entire list. And my reasons are, one, the price is a bit higher for a budget friendly. Now you are getting wool and it is like, you know, a sock yarn wool, so it is more budget friendly than, you know, if going with something hand dyed. But again, that limited colors, like there's not a lot of choices to choose from. So you may want, you know, a really pretty bold color for a pair of socks, but you're probably not gonna find it. And the colors that are there are kind of, eh, they're not the best in the world, but you know, it is what it is. Now I have knit socks out of this and mittens and they have made really great functional pieces. So I can't relate this on it as far as its functionality. It's a really great yarn to knit with. It's not the softest thing in the world. It's not like a super wash merino nylon, but it is like a nice like 
wool. It feels comfy and cozy without being too prickly. It's a good workhorse type yarn. It's just not the most budget friendly and doesn't have the greatest color palette, but I wanted to include it in this list because it is a very readily available yarn here in the United States and is one that is talked about a lot. So I just wanted to put it in this list because I have worked with it before and it is considered here a more budget friendly yarn. This next yarn I'm gonna talk about is Holskarn Super Soft. This is another one that is really, uh, like it's talked about a lot within the knitting community. There are a lot of different people who work with it. By now, if you have heard about it, you will know that the name is very deceptive. It is not a super soft yarn, but let's talk about it for a second. This is 100% wool. It comes in 50 gram balls. You can find it on Holskarn's website, Etsy, some local yarn stores. It is available here and there, but not like everywhere. Per 50 gram ball, it has 313 yards. Because of that, it's like, because of that yardage, it is a bit of a lighter fingering. Not quite a lace weight, but it is a very light fingering. Once you wash it, it does bloom and fill in those gaps, but it is a lot lighter than your typical fingering. It does have an amazing color range. It has around 100 different colors, which is fabulous. Uh, there are a lot of different colors that I have fallen in love with, but I just haven't purchased a bunch of them because yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but it is $3.96 per ball. And okay, my rating. I'm going to give this, I thought my last yarn was actually the lowest rated, but this one actually is. I'm giving this a four out of 10. Now the reason I'm giving it a four out of 10 is I'm just not a fan. I wasn't a huge fan of the Simply Soft. It is not soft. It's very deceptive. I knew going into it that people said it wasn't super soft, but I wasn't anticipating the amount of prickle. It is a very wooly wool, and I've washed the items I've made. I've made fringless mittens out of them. I have washed them so many times with different type of wool washes and other soaps, and it just doesn't quite soften up very well. Uh, it's, I mean, obviously I'm not anticipating it's gonna be like, you know, superwash merino, but I, I wasn't thinking it was gonna be quite that itchy. So I'm putting it lower because of that. Uh, it does have a great color range, but I don't think there's a whole lot that I would knit out of it. I would only knit accessories out of this, like mittens. I, I don't think I'd ever make a hat out of it because it's just too prickly and my forehead is sensitive and I wouldn't wanna give that to anybody either. It's not durable enough to make socks. I would never make a Nexus skin garment out of this, maybe a coat, but yeah, I, it's not very high on my list, but that doesn't mean other people wouldn't love this yarn. Now, if you love a good wooly wool, this is the yarn for you. I can imagine a beautiful color work pullover made out of this and a great variety of accessories. It's just not my personal favorite. Let us move on to the next category. We are going to be looking at alpaca. Now this is, there's only one yarn in this category. Uh, I will have more alpacas in the blends category, but this specific one is the only one that fits into this in the budget friendly section. So the one I am talking about is Drops Alpaca Silk. This is a 77% alpaca and a 23% silk. That number was very hard for me to like get out because it's not a normal blend in 77 and 23 it just doesn't like flow off the tongue for some reason <laughs> this is a lace weight yarn though i feel like when you hold it with something it's i feel like it's a little bit thicker than your mohair it is like a little bit floofier so i would say it's a heavy lace weight yarn it comes in 25 gram balls and is 150 yard 153 yards per ball it has around 29 different colors, not a huge color range, but it does have some really great options that you can either knit on their own or held double with other yarns that you like and enjoy. It's around $3.50 a ball. So this for 100 grams puts us a bit over that $12 range that I had talked about, uh, but it's still probably the most 
budget friendly alpaca silk you'll find. And me personally, I would give it an 8 out of 10. I have knit a hat with this yarn and I have a bunch more to knit a bunch of other different things. I have also uh, started, what did I start? Oh, I've started another hat with this yarn and it's just super soft compared to say uh, Hobie's Alpaca Blaze, which has an acrylic content in it, which makes it a bit more itchy than this one. I'm sure there are much nicer ones out there, but for the price, it is amazing. I really like it. Now, I feel like the colors, there could be more out there, but there's not and that's okay. It's just, I feel like a little bit more limited than other brands of alpaca. Now this yarn you can find on Wool Warehouse's website, Etsy, and possibly other locations. Those are just the two that seem to be the most um, popular places to purchase this from. Let's move on to our next category, which is our blends category, which I am excited to get into. The first one we have is Mayflower Cotton Merino Yarn. This one you can find on Hobie's website. There may be other places you can find it, but that was the only place I could find it. And it is where I have purchased from. This is a sport weight yarn. It comes in 50 gram balls, has 186 yards per ball, and has around 44 different colors. Now the color range is probably not my favorite. It doesn't have like, I feel like all the different colors I'd wanna ever work with, but it has a lot of really great options. Some neutrals, some bright colors, and a few things in between. Now this is about $6.10, so technically a hair over that $12 by whole 20 cents, still, you know, pretty budget friendly for being a cotton and merino. Now, I would give this probably an eight out of 10. It is a yarn that I have made a t-shirt out of, and I really like the way that it feels on my skin. It is nice and soft. It has gone through the washer and dryer, and I feel like it didn't wash super well. Now, of course, maybe don't put it through the washer and dryer, and it will wash a little bit better. I'm gonna try blocking it again and see what goes on with it. But I feel like it was just a little bit, like, stiffer afterwards. I don't know. Uh, I need to wear it again and see what I think. But overall, I really like it. It's not my, like, favorite yarn but it's really good and I would definitely see myself making another garment out of this yarn because I really like that blend of merino and wool. Now, there is a new yarn since I've kind of worked on this list, which is uh, Tony Lipsy's collaboration with Hobie and I think it's called Happy Place. <laughs> it is a beautiful cotton merino, which I have not yet worked with, but it is on my list. I am very curious to see how that compares to this Mayflower brand. The next yarn is Hulse Garn's Tides Base. This is a 70% wool and 30% silk yarn. It comes in 50 gram balls and you can find this on Hulse Garn's website as well as local yarn stores and on Etsy. So this is again a light fingering yarn. It comes in 50 gram balls, has 314 yards per ball. This one is a more limited palette than Holzgarn's other palettes for like their coast base or their super soft base. This only has about 36 different colors and it's not my favorite palette in the world. The price is about $4.24 and I personally would rate this probably at a 7 out of 10. I would say the reason for that is that limited color palette. I feel like there's not a whole lot of options on there that I would actually knit with. Like out of those 36 colors, I feel like they're not the most uh, accessible colors in the world. That may just be me and what I like to knit with personally. So there may be lots of colors on there that you would really like and you would want to knit with. But for me personally, it's not my favorite palette that they have. I have knit a sweater out of this. I have knit the Harlow Sweater V-neck by Kadri out of this and I held it double with Hobie's Alpaca Blaze and it turned out really beautiful. I will say the Tides base didn't bloom quite as much as the Hulse Garden Super Soft, so just keep that in mind and make sure, make sure you swatch beforehand because it is that light fingering weight, but 
overall I really like the feel of it and the drape of it is really nice and I would consider making another um, garment out of it or other accessories with it because it is a decent yarn I just feel like there's not as many colors as I like. The last yarn we're gonna talk about today is Drops Flora. This you can find on Wool Warehouse's website, Etsy, possibly local yarn stores, etc. But Etsy and Wool Warehouse seem to be the two places that come up at the top of my searches. This is a fingering weight yarn, comes in 50 gram balls. It has 229 yards per ball and has about 26 different colors. It's about $2.86. So this does have a little bit more of a limited palette. However, there are a good many colors within that palette that I really like. Now, I am giving this an eight out of 10. I do like the colors, but I do wish there were more of them because I do really like this yarn. I have currently knit a hat out of this yarn and I really love it. I held it double with the Drops Alpaca Silk so it does have those two in combination and I just love the way it feels so much. I do also have Drops Lima which is another like yarn that's really budget friendly it's not technically on my list, but it is another yarn that's really great. I'm knitting a sweater out of it right now, and it's that same fiber content as the Drops Flora. So the two of them are really good, and I really like them. And they soften up with washing, and I don't know, I just find a pack of really soft. I know not everybody does. You might have a slight prickle to you, but I really like this yarn. Oh my goodness. We've made it. <laughs> I have shared some of my favorite budget-friendly yarns. Now, again, if there are yarns that I may have missed or, you know, are your favorite budget-friendly yarns that maybe I haven't tried yet, put them down in the comments. Share with everybody what your favorites are. I do hope to do more videos like this in the future. Let me know if you would like to see that where I kind of focus in a little bit more on maybe one fiber type. I know there are a lot more yarns out there that are budget friendly, but these again are just ones that I've worked with as of right now. I would like to try more in the future just to, you know, experiment and see if I can find others that are maybe better or, you know, just find out ones that aren't as good and let you know before you go and buy them. So that's why I included some of the ones that weren't maybe my favorite in this list, just so you kind of know, like, what I like, what I don't like, and maybe can gauge for yourself what maybe you would prefer and not prefer. So yeah, let me know down in the comments what your favorites are or if there are some that you think I should maybe give a try in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe if you wanna catch future content, and we will see you in my next video. Have a fabulous rest of your day. Bye.